Holy moly, this must have been holding some water back. No, we were putting the slurry at the back and then having a bit of a thing. Yeah, I think I broke the dam. <laughs> Good morning everyone, if you have not already, don't forget to hit the subscribe button, ring the little bell, get notifications of my videos, this guy, every Tuesday, Friday, and sometimes we do the Sunday video. Oh, we got a big day today, we have Hillman number one, Hillman number two, and dirt. So we're getting muck spraying today, we're going to get two sprays from our friends from Sanderson's, it's just gone half seven this morning, got the feeder loaded, the mower's off that, the till sow's off that, we've just seen a little bit of grass seeding that you would have seen, hopefully they will come up soon. This has got about half a tank of diesel, this has got half a tank of diesel, and I want to see how much diesel we use, driving there and back, doing our muck spraying today, might get in tomorrow, hopefully it doesn't, and then we'll uh, drive back and then we'll fill her up. I think this, is a little bit thirsty and I could be wrong. So if we fill it up and we can see, we can compare the two to each other. I think they're gonna be the same size spreaders. Technically this should have enough power. If this has got enough power, 100 horsepower, this is at 135. This should absolutely dream it so it should use less. But let's see how much horsepower it does use. I know for one thing, 10 times easier to take the mower off. Oh, she's full. It was 10 times easier taking the mower off this because of the hooks on the back. The arms on the back have hooks on, which is just an absolute dream. But the Hurleman that we have, balls on them. So you need to get the balls completely right and get it through like that. But the pickup and um, the hooks are so much easier. All you gotta do is get it under, hook it on, and you're away to go. It's a pain in the ass. Oh, that's growing a bit of grass seed here. Some grass seeds that got left in the till, so I started to germinate. It's gonna be a big test for our Hurleman, see how she gets on. First, probably big test. When we did the size carting, it was just comfy, it was nice. The lads were talking to the butt rate man, uh, John. He was talking, it was nippy little tractor because I could go round in one. But in this short wheelbase, four cylinder Curlyman, absolute dream. I only struggled a little bit when I did the bad driving. But yeah, right, then both filled up. Oh, there we go. Let's go get some spreaders. Be interesting as well to see how much quicker. Obviously, Dan's following me in our element. How much quicker this helium is into that one? Because that only does 40k, but just about 39.3. This is 50k, which actually means it is about 52. Jeez, the wings, what happened to that one? Morning. Stop watch on, see how much quicker this is than Dad. Dad just got here and he is about, well, it says 5.40. I forgot to put it when I got here. About seven minutes slower on a half an hour trip. Not bad for the beast. So Dad is loaded up, I am loaded up. Spreaders are there. What we're gonna have to do is go over this. We're not gonna have to, we could go on 15, but it'd be a real long way. So make a mess of grass because it's raining this morning. Me and Luke are first gonna get some two dry cows the long dry cows, so we put them with the bullion heifers. We're gonna go grab them, and then Dad's gonna make a start, I think, and then we'll catch up with him when we make a start. But this is what we're gonna move. Well, this is the first little bit that we're gonna move, and then be done forever here. We'll never have muck here again. Might move that panel away as well, so it'll make the space a lot bigger. Look, just, just look at this now, and you'll see it very, very soon. All right, we're gonna move this cow move, and then we'll uh, get spreading. Rained, I love it. It was inevitable, it was coming. Father's just taking the first load. We got the dry cows from over the road, two dry cows, and then found an ink calf heifer as well that was bagging up. So I thought I'll oh, we'll grab that as well. And now we just need to do the three cows into the dry cows, and then we're done. And I can actually go muck spreading. Problem about doing it on a Monday because you always have those Monday jobs. It's 20 to 11. 20 to 11. I've not spread a load yet. Yes. Ah, ah, ah. That way. We did want to go and throw the dry cow spot, but looks like they're going on the new concrete instead. Thing. It's very tight. The grass is growing nicely in here. I'm not going to get drawn out for a bit. I'm just going to kind of crack on, get some spreading done, just because we want to kind of get on a little bit, is the plan. So that's 
it. Dad's just got the last load. It's not really a full load. It's probably a half load. And that's all we have left. Luke's just gonna stay and just scrape this up, tidy all this off, knock it all back. And then we'll have a happy Luke because all the muck will be gone. And a happy Tom. Because A, you get more collection yard space. You're not fighting through muck all the time. Actually, we've missed a little bit. Don't tell anyone. And then what we'll end up doing is dragging it all the way down there, across the yard, and chucking it here and here. Again, the reason we've not just put it on the wall yet is we've got probably about a third of the wall sealant to use. We're gonna have a session of that as well and spray that back up. Not off the floor. Coming else with Radio 1 is absolute pants now. Apart from Greg James in the morning. The music is just rubbish. But anyway, we've done probably four and a half loads. No, I know I'm driving on the grass. Don't tell Daz. And that's still new or some loads here. There's a bit in this midding. If we get to it later on, we can. But the midding is so big, it'll hold a year's walk. I'm not too stressed about that. I just want to get rid of the stuff that's here because there's a lot of stuff that needs walking out around here. So this is what we're on now, over the road. Muck's actually a lot heavier than over there. And you can see it looks quite big at the front, but the back, you know, there's not loads. The front bit's gonna be the most, and then after we've done this, we should be all right. It's quite dry, but this is muck from last winter. That's why, that's why it's heavier and a bit denser, even being under a shed. I'm about to have a panic attack. I did the work, it didn't work. I, 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 that truth it hurts, that damn it hurts. I, I, that lovey dovey shit was not a fan of it. I'm good with my friends, I don't want a man, girl. I'm in my bed, I'm way too fine to be here alone. On the other hand, I know my worth, I, 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 and now he calling me. Why do I feel like this? What happened to me? Oh, oh, oh. Supposed to love somebody else when I don't like myself. Like, ooh, guess I better learn to like this. Ooh, it might take my whole life just to do. He called me Melly, he squeezed my belly. I'm too embarrassed to say I like it. Girl, is this my boo? That's why I'm asking you, cause you know I'm. So we just stopped for a bit of lunch. Dad and his Hurleyman. Me and mine, it's not mine. That's why we did another load just over there on the way back, might as well. Look well together though, don't they? <laughs> Double Hurleyman! Is there anything more exciting? I had a hot beef sandwich. Came to the farm shop and they just made them out of the oven. The, the beef was like steaming. It was, oh, so good. And I had a bit of flat jack as well. It's great. There's a one good thing about having a farm shop next door, like your lunches are amazing. The bad thing is, you gain more chins over time. I know it's happening, and I know I need to kind of train a little bit. We'll keep up with weddings as well. Keep up with beers and drink. This, by the way, is doing really, really well. Seems to be pulling like an absolute train. Like, the box muck is heavy. Silage is obviously heavy, but it's not. I don't know. It can be fluffier, it can be wetter. But box muck is heavy, heavy stuff. And box spreaders aren't the best thing to tow around because there's a lot of weight in the back where the augers are, so it's always pulling it up like that. But it seems to be doing, coping with it, no bother. 35k, 40k, 50k. Bossing it, someone to pull in there. So I've not really explained what box muck is. It kind of says it in the name, really. Box muck is thicker muck. Obviously we have slurry that goes in channels, and at home we have the big tower. But box muck is your midden muck. We call it midden muck at home, really. And we'd call this the midden. And it's thick and it's dense. 
so you slur it, I'd put my hands in it, but they're nearly clean, so I can't go on. <laughs> so what you do with your box moat, you put it on, it's all about underneath the ground. So the roots, that's what your box muck feeds. Feeds the worms, we're mad for the worms. Save the worm foundation. So that's what our box muck does. And it's kind of like a, a longer nitrogen, if that makes sense. Stays in the ground for longer, does better for the soil. And you can't grow crops without topsoil. Your slurry is high in nitrogen. Yes, it might do stuff in the long run as well, but you put slurry on, after your first cut, second cut, and it will make grass grow. It's putting nitrogen back into the ground and you'll get a better crop from your grass. Both of them are definitely very important, but one of them does a job a bit quicker. The second one, the box book, like this, takes a little bit longer to kind of soak in and go in. We normally spread ours in spring and in autumn. When we've done all our cut of grasses in autumn or in spring, we've got lots of box book. We try and get it on at the latest April to then chop end of May. June really you know that's our plan I don't want to chop too close to spreading box muck because it can stay in the ground sometimes and it goes back into your grass and then when you sample your grass you get high ash content high ash content means you've got muck in it so it's a kind of fine balancing act but we'll spread it now we'll go into the ground it will make sure the ground has great fertility if it does flood it won't help i have heard that people are trying to ban them from spreading muck in autumn because they think it just washes down the drain but I think it's a bit daft. Personally, I think if you spread it in the wrong places and the wrong time, it can cause a little bit of damage, but this on flat ground, going into the soil, making sure the grass is good, going into winter, put a bit of sheep on, moves the muck around, bang on for the next year in spring. It's all a cycle, it's a cycle of life, how to improve your grassland and how to improve your soil, because let's be honest, it doesn't matter what you're growing, grass, grapes, oranges, grain, anything of those things, if you don't have topsoil, you don't have a crop. Right, let's get more spread. So we've got another bit of load out. I told you when we get this big bit out, it won't be that much here. A good session after lunch, it's like two o'clock now. I think we'll get all this done because you don't want to start it tomorrow because tomorrow is a new day. Nice facts with Tom. Spread is full enough. We don't like to get megas full because try and keep the spreader quite clean. It saves the washing on it. Obviously we're going to have to wash it. It saves washing it too much. That wasn't me, that was dad by the way. He spilled that. Blame the ginger guy. Look at that. So I do remember instead of putting the slurry in there because it's getting quite thick, we were getting a bucket and just tipping it over, and that's what it'll be. Just flooding over. Look at it's raining, don't wash my tires away. Holy moly, this must have been holding some water back. Just look at this. Wow. <laughs> just. <laughs> wow. An absolute flood of water's going in. It's going to go into our channels. So I have to get the slurry tanker out and just went whoosh. It's going to make a mess now, I'll tell you that for nothing. Wow. You should have seen it. Oh, we've got loads left in that bucket. <laughs> I had to grab the camera and it just went whoosh. Holy moly. Got all of it. What I've been doing is loading it up, pushing it down. I pushed it down. It's a nice soupy stuff. You know what I'm saying? Keeping this clean, keeping the yard clean. The minute it gets wet like that, we've got no chance. We were putting the slurry at the back and then having a bit of a thing. Yeah, I think I broke the dam. Sloppy stuff. Oh yeah. No. That The importance of having slats in front of that. The true test. Can he do it? It's a big test out there. Be tight. Ah! Beacons. Beacons. Good little short wheelbase tractor. That's what you want in life. Hopefully I've not got slurry spitting everywhere. Do not want that. God, things just got exciting, didn't it? That slurry when it was coming, I was thinking, oh my God, I hope those channels work. You know, because they haven't been used for a while. Sometimes they can dry up. Imagine it started overflowing and going into Tom's yard. I'd 
be in trouble, isn't it? Obviously she spreads well. I would get drone up to see, but rain and kit and you know what it's like. Because we have our nice little bit of slurry coming out of the bin over there, we're just gonna let it run out, which makes sense. They've got horses here as well, so they need this cleaning up. And whilst we're here, we've got two much spreaders, probably three or four spreader loads. Get this done because might as well do it because we're spreading the field that's just there. And then if we do have something left over, we run out of field, we're going the long one. Obviously we've just got the side discharge one that's absolutely knackered, it's about 30 years old. But with the new muck heap now, we can hold the muck for longer, we can hold a year's worth of muck, no problem. So it makes sense to not actually buy one, have our old one, so if we ever come in a little bit of a, um, a pickle, we can get it out. And then just hire two in. Obviously we've been here a day, if that muck heap was absolutely full, it might take us two days just to get rid of it all, which is no problem, two days of hiring two muck spreaders is a lot cheaper than the monthly payment on a side discharge spreader. So we were looking at it, I priced them up and I looked at loads, obviously we looked at it at yams, but yeah, I don't think we need it anymore, which is good. Another positive of having muck heap is that we don't need to spend any money on a muck spreader, which is good. Hiring is probably the way forward for us. Look at you. God, she looks good. So when I talk like a good spread of muck and a bad spread of muck, you can see the horsey stuff is like just, it's just horsey stuff. It's shavings and everything that horses have. Who'd have horses? I know a lot of people watch this have horses and they love it. So uh, it's only a joke. My sister has them. Don't worry. So you can see what we call a good spread compared to a bad spread. So this would be classed as a bad spread. You see it here? So it's just come out too quickly and it's left big marks there. You can see it, oh, th this one must have been the wet, wet load and it came out too fast, I think. Well, when I opened the door, all the wet stuff must have come to the end and just gone boosh, boosh, boosh. The mother crows might peck it around. But this is a good spread. And why is it a good spread? Because you can't see lots of big clumps. There's the odd one or two there. There's no real big clumps, but just ignore that one. There's a real nice spread of it. Not lots of big clumps everywhere. You know, the biggest clumps, something like that. All that there. Do you know what I mean? In the grand scheme of things, that's not bad at all. Turn this up a little bit so the bed works a little bit faster. So I might actually turn it down a little bit. I think I'm spreading it a little bit too fast. Do you want a nice carpet of muck? And the reason why box muck is so good as well. So when it's like this, what it does, so it feeds the wild, wildlife underneath. So the other thing, the crows can come, they can peck it in. And you know, like we aerate our land, the crows can aerate land by doing it as well. I know it's very small, I know it's very minor, but every little bit helps. Everything helps on farming. It's kind of working with nature, believe it or not, us farmers try our best. Right, one more load in the horsey bit, and then we'll get back to our stuff, see how that uh, slurry's got. Hopefully it's disappeared. So we're pretty much done. That's got a full-ish load there. And then there's a little bit left that I'm going to put in my spreader. And I can use that in the morning, just clean up at home the silo rubbish, whatever you yeah. works with, and then wash that off and that can go back. When you do take it back, ask Cassandra if you've got a sword lift. Put it on the back of that. Happy with your spreader? Very good. Baze me how much we've shifted today, quietly. Uh, but too... Because we didn't really get going, did no, we, this morning? No, no. There's been a lot of muck here, be good muck. There's nothing good else. Muck, isn't it? If it, when you leave it for a long time. It rocks down, a lot less better. of it. And it's there, it's already started, it's it's process. The difference between that and the horsey muck, I know it's oh. horse muck, but that's solid. Oh, Do you yeah. know what I mean? Every, you're shifting 
three times as much with a well, well yeah, yeah. But there's nothing in all smoke. See how the field's growing now. Yeah, all, yeah, all, changing all, it. Oh, all that grass we stitched in. You it's can so see that I, what I was doing, I was starting my rotor, putting my yeah. gate, then starting. Yeah. You can see the first sloppy load, oh, couldn't yeah, you? Oh, yeah, I didn't realise how sloppy it was. Yeah, Sudden yeah. load, it went whoosh. Yeah, no, yeah. Made a bit of a mess. Nearly but. spilled out. Yeah, the tractor's done well though. Uh, you little know, them in. I mean, if we ought to do a fuel up when we get back in. Oh, the we morning, need to do a fuel up. You put see how many leads put in this, and you just run it till it blows off, did you? Yeah, that was full though. Yeah. That was full, full. That was pretty much fun to blow. Up. We'll find out what uses more diesel. What do you think? Mine's bossy, by the way. Boss the day. Oh, bossy. Yeah, it, it felt like the was on the back from half the time. Well, this hasn't really bothered. I've been mean, pulling around it first high. It's not been wet. Ground conditions are good. Spreaders have been full, good spreaders. Good spreaders, bunning spreaders, we're mad for a bunning spreader. Well, I know the K2's a good one if you need. Yeah. But hey, you would never spread all that with road spreader. <laughs> the one thing we have done today, we've probably fed 20 million worms. Yeah. That's the most important. All that bacteria will eat this muck down all winter and it'll be there for next spring growth and everything. Cost of fertiliser and everything else to get this fertility, particularly on this side of the farm. It's really, really good. Yeah. And, it, and it's getting there. But yes, we want to reseed a bit. Yes, we want to improve the cellular. But let's get the fertility in the ground right first to get the best out of it. Feed the worm foundation. Guys, we're going to find out what used more diesel. Big Hurleyman, little uh, Hurleyman. I used 55 litres. Sound like I'm on the faster farm this year. Well, this tractor used 43 litres. 43 litres, so that's a 12 so litre difference. And no ad blue. No ad blue. But you could say it's a bit older, so it's running a little bit better. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's, it's got that to consider. But we've still shifted. I've had it on a lower discharge. You probably could spread it a bit quicker than me. However, the day didn't go any quicker because by the time you got to the field to come back, anyway. we, we, no, we weren't really waiting for anyone, were we? It's... No. So that used anywhere from 20 to 22 to 25 percent less fuel. And the new one, but I do think the new one needs running in, that's what I've been told. And look how much better the new one looks. Yeah, and also, that was well on top of its job. This, I slowed it down, slowed the bed speed down a bit, so it didn't do any problems. But it's still on all the time spread the load. It, yeah, there you I'm go. Very, very proud of what it did, the little old girl. There's the answer. That is the end of the video, and Shay is going to finish it for us, isn't he? What do you do at the end of the video? So, make sure you like and subscribe. Yep. And give it a thumbs up. And give it a thumbs up. Well done, Shay. High five. Yep. Big thanks to you all for watching. We'll see you in the next one. Bye. Bye.